Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a role-playing video game about being homeless, a twisted book about some gruesome murders at Freddy's, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Tom Knapp. Tom is an axe murder, I mean, axe throwing professional world championship competitor. Axe murderer extraordinaire, thank you very much. <laughs> well, today we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be some trash. <laughs> And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. Today's video game is Living a Back Alley Simulator. This game is by Track Simulator. Because it's on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free. Even I can afford free. Yeah, everyone can. Yeah. This is the only game from Trash Simulator. So first off, you appear in an alley and you search through garbage cans for trash. You collect paper and cloth and sell it to the guy at the end of an alley. If you collect enough, you can upgrade your searching stick that will search faster. If you earn 100 credits, you can then buy a bus ticket. Now, this is a busted up bus that is crashed, but if you have a ticket, you can walk through it and get to an alley that has much better trash. Everyone likes better trash. Yeah. Now, I played this with my dad, and we found some <laughs> trash that could be used in a microwave and sold to people in the eatery at the end of the street. This got you more money, which allowed you to get more upgrades. My dad was a little better than me at this game, but I think he had to have played as I was in school. I like games like this where you start out with basically nothing, and you just uh, build up your character and just make them stronger and stronger over time. I really like those. It's like real life. Yeah, a little bit. Except you don't have to worry about the really bad mistakes. Yeah. Well, I give Living a Back Alley Simulator 8 out of 10 stars because I really like playing with my dad and the concept of recycling trash was interesting. Uh, yeah, recycling is important. I mean, we got to do it to save the planet, you know? Mm-hmm. And now it's time for the book of the week, Five Nights at Freddy's, The Twisted Ones. This book is written by Scott Carthen. Let me read the back of the book. In fact... Tom, would you like to do the honors? I would. It's been a year since the horrific events at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and Charlie's just trying to move on. Charlie is haunted by nightmares of a masked murderer and four gruesome animatronic puppets. Something twisted is hunting Charlie, and this time, if it finds her, it's not letting her go. Ooh, Ooh I'm scared. Well, this is an AR book, and it's worth one full point. It's rated for third grade and sixth month. This is a great book for kids that love horror stories. So there's a teenager, and her name is Charlie. Now, if you know the Five Nights at Freddy's game, you know that Charlie was one of the business partner's daughter. If you remember the last book, there was a serial killer named Dave, and he got spring-locked, and he was taken away by the animatronics slash the missing children that disappeared earlier. Well, how do we know that? Because in the last book, it said that the Golden Bear was Michael, one of the missing children's. So, as you know from the last book, she knew about Freddy's, and I believe almost every day she went to check on the animatronics with her friends. But this time was a little bit different, because Jason, one of the little ones, was very interested and went by himself to find his brother, which he saw got kidnapped by the same person who kidnapped Sammy, Charlie's twin brother that was younger. Well, what happens next? Well, I want you to read the series, because it was that good of a series. Wow, books have really changed since I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty intense. Well, I give Five Nights at Freddy's The Twisted Ones 100 out of 10 stars because it was really cool that the animatronics were alive and had a plan to do stuff that was not cool. But Charlie had another plan against that plan. And I can't wait to read the third and last book in the series. Yeah, sounds like you'll be a good one. I might have to check it out myself. And now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. 
Today's cast is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Tom Knapp. Tom is an excellent professional world championship competitor. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Tiberius. No problem. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? It's been a great time so far. I really like it. I, I think you have a really good concept going on here. Okay. So you all, this is an axe thrower. So just to be sure, people pay you to throw an axe, right? Well, I am a professional competitor, but unfortunately right now, there's not a whole lot of money in axe throwing. It's kind of like the early days of the NFL. A lot of the football players, they had uh, second jobs during the summer because they just didn't make enough doing that. So my full-time job is an axe coach where I show people how to throw axes. Hmm. Well, how did you get interested in doing this as a job? I was actually a little bit resistant. I was at the Scottish Highland Games, and my uh, girlfriend wanted me to try the axe throwing. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll pass. And she says, no, go ahead. You might like it. And it's just pretty much taken off from there. Hmm. Well, how long have you been doing this? That was six years ago in January. Wow. Now, what is the most misunderstood part about this job? A lot of people come in thinking the harder you throw the axe, the better you will be. Don't do that. It is actually kind of dangerous because it's more likely to make the axe come bouncing back to where you are. And it's actually very destructive on the axes, too. It causes a lot of damage to them. And it makes, it makes it look like it. What? Makes them duller. Well, not really so much, but it just makes people look like they have anger issues when you're throwing too hard. <laughs> well, does axe throwing require a lot of training? It's just like anything else. If you want to get good at it, you have to practice it. Some people just naturally fall into it. I was kind of lucky with that, that I, I took it up pretty easily. Some people actually struggle at it. But as long as you just uh, keep with it, it's really not that hard if you just want to have fun with it. Yeah. Okay, so is the axe really sharp? Not really. That's also another misconception is that they do have to be sharp. It's mostly about how thick the blade is close to the edge. When it's, uh, the axes are either good throwers or good choppers. When they're really thick near the edge, they're a good chopper. They're sturdy. They don't get blunt very easily. A thin axe is a better thrower because it basically just slides right into the fibers much more easily. Hmm. Well, are you worried about getting hurt when you are throwing axes? Nope. Not in the slightest bit worried about that. Because safety is our biggest concern. Uh, we watch people to make sure that they're not breaking the safety rules. Uh, we want everyone to have fun, but safety is absolutely the top priority. And if things are happening like people are throwing too hard or they're trying to walk up to the target when other people are about to throw, I mean, we got to let them know. Those are dangerous things. Okay. Now, what is the best part about being an axe thrower? The, the, the people that I've met through the years... Um, I've been out to the World Championship for the last four years, and I've made some pretty good friends. I see them every once in a while at competitions and leagues and things. And I, I don't think I've met anyone in the league that is, I would classify as a bad person. Everyone is very willing to help everyone out. I give wow. advice. Uh, just, just good people. Now, you said that you were a World Championship competitor. What is the World Axe Throwing League? The World Axe Throwing League is an organization that started in about 2017. And it's actually built on a movement that started in about 2005 or so. Basically, some guys up in Canada are in the backyard, and they start throwing axes, and they say, hey, you know what? Uh, let's start showing other people how to do this. So they opened up a couple of venues, and they started their own league, the International Axe Throwing Federation. Uh, the World Axe Throwing League is a, comp a, a competing league, and a lot of people uh, compete in both leagues. Uh, the league is made up of uh, four sessions. Every session, there is one league. Uh, you can actually compete in more than one league at a time, and I frequently do because that's what you basically have to do because it's just getting so competitive. You have to assume one of these leagues you're not going to do as well, and hopefully in the, the other one you can do better to help qualify for the world championships. Okay. Now, when you are throwing an axe, is it kind of like the same axe that people use to chop down trees? No, not even remotely. Kind of like what I said before, it's either a good chopper or a, or a good thrower. It's never both. Because a thin blade will just get damaged much more too easily. Do you mind showing me some? Uh, sure, I have a couple here. Um, I have my competition axe. This is actually the most expensive axe that I own right here. This is a modified butcher. It's uh, had the handle removed, it has, so it has a special handle on it. It's hickory, bloodwood, and royal palm on here. And this was actually made by the current uh, world champion before he became the world champion. 
It has a very big scoring area on it. It doesn't taper back like most axes do at the top and bottom. And it's just a, an, an exceptional throwing axe. So the royal wood is basically the handle of the axe, and the hickory wood is the core, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And they're all basically just compressed together, held together with wood glue. So the blade is like a square, two squares, one smaller than the other one. And the bigger square, how it's connected to the smaller square, is by a little rectangle. And the square is not actually a square, but on the bottom, it curves in. Which is really cool. Yeah, and actually, uh, if you want to see these axes that I'm talking about here, if you go to uh, my website, ageofaxes.net, and go to interviews, I have all these axes listed, if you're not watching this on video. Wow. Now, what is the hardest part about being an axe thrower? Uh, putting up with the people who think they know how to throw axes when they have never done it in their life. That's a hard one. Yeah, and you find people like that all the time. They they do something one time, they think they're an expert, and they are not an expert. Not by a long shot. <laughs> now, when you're at work, do guests that you are coaching try to challenge you? When I start people off, I tell them I'm going to go over safety, how to throw, a couple of games, and if they are feeling a little bit frisky, they can challenge me. But that's a really bad idea. I am basically uh, one of the top 10 throwers in in Florida. The chances of them beating me even as a group are pretty slim, but but people still have fun trying to do it. Now, our dad said that Vikings use an axe. Why do they like axes over, say, swords? Axes have a couple of huge advantages over swords. One of them is that they don't have nearly as much metal in them, so they're, they're a lot easier to make. Sword making is a very refined process that is very, very complicated. You don't need a whole lot of skill to make an axe. It's a pretty simple uh, tool, and most of it is wood, which is something that is easily accessible. I mean, with an axe, if it breaks, you just take off the head, slip in another handle, and it's good to go. If, an a if a sword breaks, it's done. It's, it's just not that good anymore. And it was a very common weapon because it was so easily accessible. Swords were basically for nobility and knights and, and people like that, but the common man, almost none of them had swords. And the axe is just basically a brutal weapon. Yeah, it's very brutal. Now, do you make your own axes? I do not right now. Um, I really like the idea of doing that. And part of the World Axe Throwing League, we have a lot of people that do make their own axes. Mm. And they come up with some absolutely amazing designs. If you do a search for intricate or uh, special axes online, you could find all kinds of interesting patterns and designs. People I'll look get, for some. Yeah. People get really creative with these. Now, what was the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your job? Well, I'd have to say that uh, when one of the people that I was training came in, uh, Mojo Rowley, he's a local wrestler. I don't think he wrestles anymore, but um, he that man is just absolutely crazy, but in a good way. Absolutely nice guy. We had such a good time throwing with each other. And I have absolutely no interest in wrestling, but I am such a fan of this guy. Okay. So who can you say was the person to help drive your passion the most? That would be my girlfriend because she literally pushed me into it. <laughs> I didn't want to try it at first. I mean, she literally had to say, go ahead, you might like it. I don't think she's ever said that to me again. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> well, what advice would you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and become a professional axe thrower? Well, right now, as I explained before, um, it's not really a viable way to make a living just yet. You would have to have another type of income. But it is definitely growing, and hopefully in a couple of years, maybe some people will be uh, full-time professional axe throwers only. But even if you don't become a professional axe thrower, it is still a lot of fun. We have all kinds of people that come in for birthday parties, anniversaries. We've had divorce parties there. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So you can host parties there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, people come, uh, they'll bring in their own food we, because we don't have food there. We have some candies and things. But if, if you want to bring in some, some uh, something from somewhere else, I mean, that's fine. No big deal there. And for the adults, we have adult beverages. Kids, that, we have water. Yeah, we, we have water and sodas for, uh, for the kids. But sometimes for the adults, some people are very nervous, and they need the little extra encouragement, and the, uh, the adult beverages help them out with that. Yeah. 
Well, I'm sure this is an expensive job to get into. I'm sure the axes have to be costly, right? Yes and no. Uh, like the one that I showed you, my professional one, that is uh, close to four hundred dollars. But that's it, expensive. But you can go to Ace Hardware and get uh, one of their axes there. That's only about twenty two dollars, and it makes a phenomenally good throwing axe for the money. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it, but probably the most difficult part would be making a target. Now you can make a, a target out of planks but you're going to go through them fairly quickly. You want to have an end grain target, basically a tree trunk chopped up in slices. Now, it's going to be very heavy, but once you have a stand made for it, it'll last for thousands of throws. So it may be a little bit expensive at first, but the cost goes down o over time. Okay. Now, wh what was the best advice that you've ever received, and who gave you that advice? I'd have to say my parents. Uh, basically... They just wanted me to be a good and moral person. And I cannot think of uh, a couple, two people that are in, in, any more good and moral than my parents. Because the only thing you really have is your reputation. And once that is gone with someone, you can't get it back. You just got to be a good person and be respectful of everyone. It, it's a simple concept, but a lot of people just don't get that. Wow. And what was the very first job that you've ever had? Oh, you would never guess this. Take a wild guess. Publix. No. Okay, I worked in a donut shop. Wow. Now, I wasn't there for very long. Okay. And it was not really a very good job, and I wasn't happy there, and I wasn't making money. But that was my very first job, uh, selling donuts. Well, was there anything you learned from that job that helped you be a better axe tower? No. <laughs> Other than just trying to have a good work ethic. I, wherever you go, I uh, should just have good work ethic. I, I used to work for a restaurant one time, and on a shirt that they have, it says, your work is your signature. Sign everything with excellence. And that's just something that's really carried with me. That pe when people look at you and you're doing a job, that basically tells them what kind of person you are. Wow. So if you had to do a different job from the ones that you're already doing, what would it be? Well, I actually have a degree in computer programming, and I have always loved doing that. I just never really had a chance to get into it. Something was uh, always in the way, one way or another. Just a little bit of bad luck, uh, bad timing. I just never got into it, but, but I love computer programming. Wow. Well, what message do you want to tell children all over the world about doing the work that you do? It is really a lot of fun, and a lot of people look at this and think, that is weird, I don't want to try that. It's okay to be a little bit weird sometimes. Try something different. I try something different, and it basically changed my life. It's like, first off, the first word that I put into YouTube was bowling. And I'm a big bowler. Which is cool. Which, yeah. you got into it. Yeah. Just by trying I, it once. Just by trying it once, yeah. And I used to be a pretty good bowler, too. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I used to be able to score about 140 consistently, so I wasn't too bad. It's about my average as well. Really? Yeah. Very nice. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Buy Apple stock. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, uh, if I knew about axe throwing, I definitely would have tried to get into it a little bit earlier. Uh, and maybe have my own place instead of working somewhere else. But I have a really good time where I am. But hopefully uh, at some point I'll have my own place one day and... Uh, and have a good time doing that. Cool. Now, what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? Um, I don't know. Maybe working at UPS. I don't know. <laughs> uh, UPS is a great company to work for, but where I was at, it just had a lot of problems, and it was very difficult, and I, I did not like the management that was there. And I basically saw how they handled people, and I pretty much vowed, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I want people to actually, you, you don't have to like your boss, but you got to be able to respect them. And I just did not respect a whole lot of them because of the way that they ran things. Okay. So when you're not working, what do you do for fun? Well, I like video games, role-playing games specifically, uh, Baldur's Gate, uh, Diablo, uh, Neverwinter Nights. But I'm also uh, a tabletop gamer. I play Dungeons & Dragons with some friends every other weekend. Did you know that Diablo 4 is coming out soon? I do. 
I'm a little excited, but I'm also a little disappointed with Diablo 3. I never really quite got into that one. Yeah, Diablo 3 was good overall, but... Yeah. I still prefer 2. They they revamped the uh, the graphics engine to be actual 3D, mm. and it looks pretty nice. Basically the same gameplay, so, and that's basically the only downfall that I thought of it before, is that the graphics just were, were not there. Okay. Well, what was your favorite book to read? I would have to say The Lord of the Rings. Wow. Big book. Yeah. But I haven't read it since I saw the movies, and so that's been uh, about 20 years ago. And there are things in the movies I'm thinking, wait a minute, was that really in the book? So I'm going to have to go back and read it at some point, just just to make a little comparison there. Okay. Okay. And can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid show. Mm-hmm. But the one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on. That I'm not supposed me. to tell you about. I think you might have me on that one. Most of them aren't kid stories. <laughs> I can tell you something that was a little bit embarrassing, but... Uh, sure. Okay, so I was uh, in a competition up in Apopka. It was by the radio station uh, that, I d- that I mentioned before. And uh, the prize on the line is a wrestling-style belt. So whoever won this tournament got to play the host of the radio show for the belt. And it came down to me and one other person. The other person was an 11-year-old girl. <laughs> So we're competing, and the entire crowd is chanting, Sophia, Sophia. And I'm like, hello, me, I'm playing too. But (laughs) even my fiance wasn't saying anything. (laughs) I only heard one voice in the crowd, one of my friends. He was on my side. He's like, go, Tom, you can do it. But at that moment, I'm thinking, you know, guys, you know, someone's got to be on my side. I mean, I realize she's a cute little 11 year old girl, but, you know, I can't really compete with that. Unfortunately, I beat her. See, I, I, t- I taught her how to throw about two years ago, and she gets nervous when she plays me. Okay. So, so she was not at her best. So I got to play for the belt, and I, I won the belt, and that's sitting uh, at where I work now at Epic Axe Throwing. But I have no doubt in my mind that she could have won it if it wasn't for me. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, not really embarrassing, but not – didn't really mean – I mean, it's all fun and games, but you know, well, it's kind it's like of someone, embarrassing that barely oh, ever cared for me, you. Me, but. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Well, is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Um, let's see. A uh, computer programmer can solve a Rubik's Cube. Ooh. Have you ever done that? How fast? Oh, not very fast. It takes me about two minutes. I know there are people who can do it within seconds, and, and that's just absolutely amazing. I can't even solve a Rubik's Cube. Well, I had to be taught minutes. how to do it. In fact, my brother, when it first came out, yeah, that's how old I am, he bought a book on how to solve it, so he learned it, and then he taught it to me. And that was almost 40 years ago, and I, I still remember how to do it. Wow. Plug it up to teach me. It takes a while, but it's a lot of fun, oh, yeah. and it impresses people. Yeah, it does. Now, do you have a Facebook or website for my listeners or someone to follow you? Well, like I said, I just uh, bought a web domain last night. It's called um, ageofaxes.net, and I'm hoping to put a lot of axe throwing information on there and information about myself uh, and other people that I know and venues that I go to, um, and uh, post uh, some of my trick shot videos. Actually, on YouTube, I'm, I'm not really that familiar with YouTube, but I've posted a number of videos where I am doing trick shots. If you search Tom Knapp Axe Thrower, uh, they'll come up, and I have videos of me throwing six axes at once, double rotations, one and a half rotations. Robin Hood? Uh, no, I don't have one of Robin Hood because that's a very hard uh, to do. Very hard to do, yeah. Wow. But I have a number of different uh, uh, trick shots that I have posted on there. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Mask Corners? Absolutely. Yay. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you so much, Tom, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, we're going to do some more word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about outfits. Hmm? I like outfits. Keep me from being embarrassed. (laughs) 
Well, Maggie does need to buy some new outfits for gym practice. At the sporting goods store, she finds two outfits on sale for $24.80 each. She buys them both and finds out that she saves a total of $22.38. If she saved the same amount on each one, what was the original price of each outfit? Um, um, not as much. <laughs> Well, first, this is a real-world problem because people do like to enjoy working out at the gym, and they do need to wear clothes when they do it. So let's check it out. So to solve this one, first you have to figure out the discount. Since you bought two outfits, the discount is half the amount you saved. So $22.38 divided by 2 is $11.19. Now you need to add that to the price of the outfit. So, $24.80 plus $11.19 is $35.99. Now, those are some expensive outfits. About $30 for tax. $36 for tax. So, Tom, do you have special outfits for axe sewing? Actually, I do have a couple of jerseys from the World Championships that are very comfortable to wear. Yeah, when I go to the World Championships, I'm given a free T-shirt. I call it my $1,000 T-shirt. And it's a very nice material because when you do a lot of throwing in one day, it can actually start to rub the skin a little bit. And I've had days when I've thrown over 1,000 axes. Same shirt on? Same shirt, yeah. Hmm? Goes right in the wash, yeah. <laughs> now, Tom, my teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you use math in your work? I work in axe throwing. I absolutely do every single day. Scorekeeping, that's the basic thing right there. Inventory, things like that. But I actually have a story from the World Championship in 2018 where the guy that was winning the game took a chance that he did not need to because he misadded his score, ended up losing the World Championship because of it. Whoa. Yeah, that's math is important. Math is very important. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom, for your help with Math Corners. Uh, you're very welcome. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providing guidance and direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. Well, this week, I saw leadership with my dad. Well, my school laptop stopped working and he opened it up and fixed it. A few days later, it was broken again. This time he had me open it up and learn how to reseat the hard drive and told me if I could swing my bag around and it will disconnect the hard drive and create problems. He also said if it continues to break that I would have to replace it with my own money. That did not make me happy. Because I am broke. But he was providing guidance and direction while showing me how to fix my own problems. So Tom, did you see or use leadership at all this week? Well, where I work at, I'm not just an axe coach, but I'm also one of the supervisors there. And being a supervisor, you have to lead by example. Uh, some things, well, one important thing is you never ask someone to do something you haven't done yourself. Because yeah. you have got to show that you're proficient in something before uh, someone else will follow you doing the same thing. Mm hmm Well, of all the Heart of the Lion virtues, which is the one that you see the most? Integrity. I'm a big fan of that, of just being trying to be a good moral person. Sure, everyone fails every once in a while, but overall, if more people would just try to be more honest and moral and have integrity, it, we would just have a much, much better world. Well, we should always try and be lying strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Oh, absolutely. Totally agree with that. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing... Tom Nap for being on my show. It has been so much in talking to you today. I think we learned a lot about the world of professional axe throwing and why this job is so much fun. Well, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate uh, the job to tell people about axe throwing because it is something that most people, I think it, right now is a little bit of a stigma. And I, it's just uh, we are now there, but the more people hear about it, the more people get into it. Okay. 
Well, do you mind giving your website again? Okay, that would be ageofaxes.net. Now, right now, there's not much there. I just have some pictures of some of the axes that I brought in the show on the show. But over the next few weeks, I'm going to be adding uh, profiles of axe throwers, uh, profiles of axes, uh, tournaments that may be coming up, um, and, and like I said, uh, some trick shots that I may want to put up there. Also, I'm on Instagram as uh, Tom Axe Coach. That I should be posting some things on there also. Sweet. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on The Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy. That's a wrap and booyah. <laughs>